God's signature, the proof that there is a creator. Seriously? There is a matrix that encodes the name of God. It defines our culture. It also defines science and provides a meaning for the existence of the human being. We will see how and why along with this documentary. Numbers? Why numbers? No matter the biology, physics, or the place in the universe, numbers define the structure of reality. Numbers make up the only universal language. Mathematics is not the only possible relationship between numbers. So the keys to understanding this matrix are not based on complex calculations. Let's start with the foundations of our culture. This matrix is inversely symmetrical. Odd and even numbers embody the concept of duality. Good and evil, body and mind antagonistic but interconnected entities like the yin-yang. Next. The detractis represents the structure of space and harmony. We find it in the pyramids, the four elements, and in the Pythagorean tuning that configures the musical notes. 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, 3. Now let's count the figures that go around the matrix. The detract kiss is generated when the results are reduced to their numerical essence. The concept of change underlies the structure of the I Ching. There are two lines containing only three numbers. Are they empty? Complete. Who knows? There are eight possible combinations of full and or empty lines. As shown by the eight trigrams of the I Ching that may combine in 64 possibilities, the 64 hexagrams. The I Ching is an ancient tool that aims to picture an instance of the process of change to determine the factors driving it. Too abstract? Let's continue. What does last 28 days in an increasing and decreasing cycle? Our dearest moon! The 
the year is divided into equinoxes when the night duration is the same as the day in the same proportion of an even number divided by two and solstices when day or night take their maximum duration like odd numbers separated into two whole numbers This matrix also represents the signs of the zodiac, an ancient way of classifying human personality and the months of the year. Each zodiac sign's characteristics are defined by the combination of two parameters, the season of the year, summer or fire, autumn or air, winter or earth, spring or water, its mode or position, cardinals, coincide with the equinoxes and solstices. Fixed indicate the center of the season. Mutable or double points out the exit of the season. This matrix represents the 12 signs of the zodiac, 4 cardinal signs represented by 9, 4 fixed signs represented by 3, 4 double signs represented by 6, 3 times 2, combined with the 4 elements, 3 air signs above, 3 earth signs below, 3 water signs falling, and 3 fire signs ascending. We are at center, but we'll get to this later. Let's follow the path. This path is the Tao. The Tao that can be told is not the absolute Tao. Man models himself after the earth. The earth models itself after heaven. The heaven models itself after Tao. The Tao models itself after nature. There are four numbers nine visible in this matrix. But there are five more hidden in its structure. The sum of the numbers along its vertical and horizontal axis gives 9. The same as the sum of the four numbers in its center. There is a total of nine nines in the matrix. Lao Tzu wrote the Tao Te Ching in 81 poems, nine times nine. Coincidence? Out of Tao, one is born. Out of one, two. Out of two, three. Out of three, the created universe. The created universe carries the yin in its back and the yang in front. Through the union of the pervading principles, it reaches harmony. These are the foundations of our culture. This matrix expresses the concepts of duality with the yin yang, change with the I ching, harmonies with the Tetratkis. And the cycles of the moon, the sun, the stars, and finally the Tao, the path or the process. And what about science? There are three mathematical constants that structure the universe. There are more, but these three are irrational 
uncontrollable numbers, each with infinite decimals, always different. Phi, the golden ratio, defines nature. Phi is 1.61. Pi is the foundation of geometry. Pi is 3.14. E, the Euler number, is the basis of calculus. E equals to 2.71. The center of this matrix contains a reference to these three constants. We obtain number E with one operation, pi with two operations, and phi with three operations. What does the next layer of this matrix unveil? This layer is formed by three numbers, 3, 6 and 9. They follow a triangular sequence. The 6 is twice the 3. This highlights the importance of duplication. Duplication is the elementary mechanism for the development of life. The duplication pattern applied to the numbers would as follows. A self-replicating sequence is obtained when the numbers of this progression are reduced. 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, 1. What happens when we order this sequence in the 3, 6, 9 structure? We obtain a vector flow following this sequence. It also works the other way around, dividing by 2 instead of duplicating. Then, the flow will happen in the other direction. Why? Because we got two poles as indicated by 3 and 6. Let's apply the duplication to the numbers 3, 6 and 9. The result is 3, 6, 3, 6, 3, 6 The result is 6 3 6 3 6 3 The result is always 9 We can see an equilibrium point and two flow oscillations This is the exact definition of vibration. Everything vibrates. Vortex mathematics define how energy flows between two poles. Many other properties are also attributed to vortex math with more or fewer criteria. Quoting Nikola Tesla, If you knew the magnificence of the 3, 6 and 9, you would have a key to the universe. Let's add up the numbers that make up each pole. Domain of the 3. 1 plus 2 plus 4 equals 7. Domain of the 6. 8 plus 7 plus 5 equals 20. Equals 2. Seven and two, the heart of the matrix.
the internet offers a lot of information about vortex mathematics if you are interested. Let's focus on the matrix and its next mystery. The third layer of the matrix is composed of even and odd numbers. These sets highlight the importance of the binary system. The binary system, based on 0 and 1, is the basis of all computation. Computation encodes information. And information seems to be what unifies the quantum universe. This matrix encodes information and life. Today we know the genetic code and how it works, but we don't know why it is the way it is. DNA is a structure that supports life in all its forms, be it a fly, a virus or a human being. DNA is a coiled chain winded around with two pairs of nucleotides that combine only with each other, like the odd and even pairs of this matrix. Nucleotides carbine into triplets called codons. Each codon always includes three nucleotides, as highlighted by the sequence 3, 6, 9 of this matrix. There is a total of 64 codons. They recombine to create the 20 essential amino acids present in all forms of life. DNA is formed according to the structure of this matrix. This matrix shapes the fundamentals of science, numbers E, pi and phi, that structure nature, the flow of energy, the binary code that corresponds to information, and the structure of DNA in other words, life. Two important questions still remain unanswered. Where does this matrix come from? And why is it the name of God? The coincidences exposed both in culture and science may seem relevant. But enough to claim that this matrix is the name of God? We'll see. Let's go with the first question. This matrix originates from an elementary concept. 1 plus 1 equals 2. But two ones are not the same as 1, 2. The multiplication table becomes the best way to sort the infinite combinations of the expansion of this concept. This is the multiplication table. And these are its results. The numerical reduction consists of finding the essential value of each number. For example, 45 equals 4 plus 5 equals 9. 
Now let's apply this reduction to the entire multiplication table. The result is a matrix of numbers that repeats indefinitely, like the bricks of creation. This matrix is a common denominator of all numbers up to infinity. Now, why do I claim that this matrix is the name of God? The Kabbalah is the discipline that has deepened the most into the mystery of the name of God. The Kabbalah is based on two pillars, the Tree of Life and the Tetragrammaton. Both are inscribed in the structure of this matrix. Let's look at the Tree of Life. The first line of this matrix is a sequence. The second line of this matrix is two sequences. The third line highlights the triangular shape. The fourth is made of two intertwined sequences, like a cross. Thus, indicating one dimension, two dimensions, three dimensions and four dimensions. The Tetragrammaton is the name of God formed by four letters. Each letter corresponds to a numerical value. Y equals 10. H equals 5. V equals 6. H equals 5. The simple sum of this name is 26. 26 is 2 plus 6 that equals 8. This matrix is an eight-digit structure. The book of Genesis 1, verse 26, quotes, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. Yahweh combines the masculine and feminine energy. And Ve, Hava, the first woman. Two complementary energies, like the symmetry of the matrix. The Bible warns that the name of God cannot be pronounced. Why? Because it's not really a word. It's a formula. A spell. The true name of God results from invoking one letter, then two, then three, and finally the four. The sum of all the letters displayed according to the Tetraictes is 72. We have already seen how 72 is the heart of the matrix. Its inverted shape is 27. Verse 27 of Genesis quotes, So God created man in his image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. According to the Kabbalah, 45 is the number that represents man, Adam. Understanding Adam as all human beings. Rows 3 and 6 of this matrix add up to exactly 45 each. Each one is complementary to the other, like man and woman. 
The Kabbalah affirms that the true power of the name of God is hidden in the number 216. The Shem Ham Farash is a structure of 72 triplets composed of Hebrew letters that define the different qualities of God. The Shem Ham Farash is usually identified as the name of 216. This matrix displays this name more elegantly and forcefully. The name of God is in the shape and the heart of this matrix. There are two lines that represent the man and the woman. Thus, the rest may well be identified with the pure divine. Let's subtract man and woman from this matrix. Do you guess what the rest of the numbers add up to? Precisely, 216. We have seen how this matrix configures the name of God. Lay the foundations of our culture and science and encodes the structure of DNA. God is the energy that drives life. The soul is not located in the head or in the heart. It is in the DNA. It is in the DNA. The soul is the spark that activates the DNA. DNA is made up of thousands of nucleotide pairs. These pairs roll up. Each complete round includes 10 pairs. The bonding bridge of each pair occurs between the 5 carbon of the first nucleotide and the 3 carbon of the next. Each nucleotide strand joins in an antiparallel way. The name of God structures the union of the DNA strands. Now let's see what this matrix has to say about the meaning of the human being. Lines 3 and 6 of this matrix represent the human being, and they also explain a reason for our existence. The meaning of the numbers and their position in the matrix leads to the following conclusions. The masculine and the feminine are complementary. They bring mutual balance. Evolution Love in action The essence of the human being is made up of three parts body, mind and spirit that have the function of evolving within a state of equilibrium Consciousness results from this balance that integrates health, thought, and feeling. Our role in life is to materialize our inner balance on the outside. Our legacy is contributing to the development of life. Each one of us impacts the world. Each of us affects other people and the global balance.
This impact determines our karma, the cycle of our evolution. The possibilities and difficulties within each family form the fundamental lessons for our development. The family into which we are born is the school of our life. And the couple or the family that we build becomes the university. This matrix states that the relationship between 45 men and 72 God is the golden ratio. The human being is godlike in the function of Phi. This similarity is based on the fact that we share the power to create. This power is real. It allows our wishes to become true, among many other things. If you want to go deeper into this topic, I invite you to read more explanations on my web, www.godsignature.info. This video offers a condensed and visual explanation of this matrix. We have seen how each matrix is a unit from the infinite mesh of matrices that weave reality. The Upanishads of ancient India explain that Atman is the soul and that Brahman is God, so that Atman equals Brahman. The Atman code sets up the terms of the contract of each soul. These, as well as the invocation of power, are beyond the capacity of this documentary. Verifying that there is a creator, that the soul is the engine of life, that we can change our reality and contribute to the development of others, should make us reflect about our place in the world. I am Willie M. Olsen. My goal with this documentary is to share these discoveries. And you? Do you want to share them?